Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Natalie Stefanovic. I am expert area manager at Hub Brussels. The geographical area that I work with is Europe. Uh, today's webinar is going to focus on um, EU rules applicable to goods and services when dealing foreign inside the EU. Our guest speaker is going to be Mr. Vincent Ripé. Uh, before we start, we may have a, a few questions to ask you if possible. It would be nice if you could uh, click tick uh, the, the answers that um, you, you want to tick. And um, here they are. So please um, select whether you are in services or goods. Have a few seconds to do that. I think we're going to move to the next question. Are you selling services or goods? So you can see the results. You are mainly in goods. Do you foresee difficulties selling services in the EU? Another few seconds. So this is half in both. Is there a, a third question? No, at the end. At the end of the presentation. Okay, so I think we're done with the with the questions. And um, um, now, if you are ready, I will give you the floor. Um, so. Please welcome uh, Mr. Vincent Ripé. And if you have questions, uh, can you please write them in the chat box during the seminar? Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. So good afternoon to everybody. So the, today's subject of this nine talk is the rules applicable to goods and services when we are dealing inside European Union, but of course outside Belgium. So, first, a small definition, because we are speaking about export talks, which can be confusing when we are inside the European Union. So, export, if you have a look to the dictionary, that sell and deliver national products abroad. But the reality is more complex. As a company, business has first to comply with legal and fiscal rules, and this legal and fiscal rules, we are of course uh, living in the country uh, in the kingdom of Belgium. But for many uh, rules and so on, it's at the level of European Union that lots of things are defined. So, what can we do as a Belgian company? We can do national operation, of course, so we sell B2B, business to business, or business to consumer. And in most of the case, if I deal with nationals, I have to invoice national VET. So now, at the level of European Union, that's why we confuse with export, the language of the European Union and also the fiscal rules of Belgium foreseen when you deal outside Belgium but inside the European Union that you are not anymore doing export. Why? Because export that's to deliver goods outside the, uh, the custom territory of your country. And the custom territory of Belgium is not Belgium. The 27 members of the European Union 
have in common a customs territory. So meaning that when we export goods, that means that we have customs procedure and that means that we exit European Union. So the exact language for goods when we deal inside European Union for sales is intracommunitary delivery. And this intracommunitary delivery, it is very simple when we do business to business operation, meaning that a company of Belgium with a numero d'entreprise, company number, or more generally, a VAT number in Belgium, send the goods to another company, which is registered in European Union, in another country. So meaning that if there is a VAT number from the client, we can exempt the client of the v Belgian VAT, meaning that when a Belgian company sells goods to a German company, for example, at the condition that I have a transport document that attests that the goods are leaving Belgium, then I'm in position to issue an invoice towards my German professional client exempt of Belgian VAT. If goods are delivered outside European Union, it's free of VAT also, and there it's officially called export in European Union rules and in the fiscal rules of Belgium. I can do other activities than selling goods abroad inside the European Union. I can also deal with services. And when I deal with services, let's say I have two kinds of services that I will explain later on, the intellectual services, and we have some non-intellectual services and this non-intellectual services, I have a problem with fiscality according to European Union rules. So if I'm a company, for example, and I install an equipment in France, as I will render services in France, I will install the machine in France, but can be also to do maintenance at the client in France and so on. My Belgian VAT number is useless because as I do this on the territory of France, it is mandatory that I have at the name of my Belgian company a French VAT number and invoice the client with French VAT because that becomes a national operation in France. So we have to take care of all this, but I will come back on all this. So these rules are coming for, uh, from European Union and also some Belgian fiscal rules. So what we will speak this afternoon is about the rules imposed by European Union and Belgium, because that's the most general. After what, we will see also that the country of a client can have an importance on this. So we will see first about the product. We will see after this about the services. We will speak for both about the fiscal matters. And we will come also some social aspect and at the end language aspect. And I have put three points because lots of our rules from European Union and from Belgium authorities or foreign authorities in European Union can apply, but we will discuss at the end. So first, the product. So I'm a company in Belgium, and I have some rules imposed by European Union and Belgium, but also the destination country. So first, the Belgian rules applicable. So let's say that we are working in the same sector. So I have to comply with Belgian rules. Why? Because for the moment, let's say I intend to 
sell my goods, not export because we are in the European Union, so to do an intracommunitary delivery in another country of the European. Why I must comply with the rules of Belgium? Because of course that's Belgium who is liable to control all my activity and see if I respect the rules of both Belgium and the European Union. So in food sector, for example, Everything is controlled by AFSCA in French, so in English, Federal Agency for Health Safety. So, for example, the AFSCA will control the plan, the factory, but it will also issue some certificate for some products that are required for commercialization. So, for example, if you deal with meat, you cannot sell abroad any product, it's even the case nationally without that they have a health certificate. So this is for Belgium. What we have in common at the level of European Union, and I will show you afterwards the website about this, we have some common rules according to the labeling. The common rules about the labeling, it's mostly regarding regarding the content of the labeling. So at the European Union level has been defined the rules of labeling of most of the products and of course where you have the most uh, strict rules and so on, that's about the food, that's about all what is medical and so on, but you have also regarding, for example, your computer, some rules applicable. So I give you a sample of my experience. I was during Christmas, New Year and beginning of January in Bulgaria. And there, let's say, I faced this kind of, uh, of problems. So the company I'm dealing with has all the certification in Belgium. They were already visited by the AFSCA that have nothing to say to anything. So that's a product, a chocolate. And here you have all the indication necessary about the chocolate, so the nutrition fact and so on. And this packaging in Belgium has no problem. In Bulgaria, what is my problem? That I have to label in Bulgarian, of course, because here that's written in French, in Dutch, in English, in German, I think, and so on. But of course, to have this product available in Bulgaria, I need to put a sticker. I can do this in any other country of the European Union. That's not, not mandatory to have a labeling on the product itself. If it's sold in another country, you can put a sticker. Some people don't like for marketing reasons, but that's possible. And so here is really the packaging of the chocolate. So in Belgium, no problem. And as there were no problem, they sent the product like this in Bulgaria. But in Bulgaria, we start a new activities, a new company. And we had the visit of the same agency, but the Bulgarian one, as AFSCA. We discussed a lot and so on. There were not big issues, but at a moment, come the things. Have a look here. So the date. till when the product can be easily consumed is not clear. Okay, we can see it, but they say, no, that's not clear. Has to be changed. And then we are with food products and you need a lot number, a lot number that means a batch of fabrication. And the company say to me, oh, we have done here. But if you have a close look, you cannot see anything. And there were some even worse than this one. What was the problem? In Bulgaria, I have to fill some register for this agency. And this register 
S to indicate the lot number and the date here. So they say to me, okay, you start the business and so on, but say to your supplier that he has to change. So I'm also dealing with another product and you will see on the photo that sometimes nothing is perfect. So, and this other product is perfect. Why? Because here it's not yet translated in Bulgarian, but it's clearly written. The day till where it can be consumed, the number of lot. Perfect. Just one thing that you have to take care of, but it is not the subject of the day. I can tell you this chocolate is perfect, but here, during the transportation and so on, there are some problems with the products, so it becomes a little white. So, of course, each time you sell your product some, somewhere, you have to take care, of course, to the rules, but to your product also. So, when I said to the agency in Bulgaria, ah, yes, but the number is here, they say, no, no, according to European rules, you must put lot number and identify clearly and i will show you later on how it comes so we have a website from the european union that i already show in a previous webinar and lots of people are speaking about this that's really the key to access to lots of information So I give you an example and I take exactly the one that I'm dealing with. So I know the code of the chocolate. If, if you, you need to know how to do this in a previous seminar and on the video, you, you will see how to handle all this. And so I'm from Belgium and I deal with Bulgaria. Here they're asking me, what is my product? So is it things of more than two kilos and so on? That's not the case. Other blocks, slab and bars, that is. And it's not filled. And that's not with surreal, so that's this one. So here, for example, you have already an idea of what is the VAT in Bulgaria regarding this project. What I can send, send, say to you, there is already a big difference. They care about this because for this product, chocolate in Belgium, this type of chocolate in Belgium is with 6% VAT in Belgium. It's with 14 in Bulgaria. That means that when you look at the price of a product we sell, don't forget that there is 14% difference, 14 VAT difference between a Belgian price, including VAT, and a Bulgarian. So for the position of a marketing can be important. And now I have the import requirement because that's a website with outside and inside European. So that's intracommunitary acquisition. But here they speak about the specific things. And so they are, if you have genetically modified things, if it's food stuff, for non-animal origin, traceability, and so on. But let's say you can have a look to all this. So for example, if your product is organic, meaning bio in French, you have some special rules that's common at the level of European Union. So that means that the product I deal in Bulgaria is bio. So I had to present the certification of bio products and Excuse me, that's a Wallonian company, so I tell you for Wallonia. 
So all this country I use with paper issued by an authority of a state. But we are in Belgium, so this authority is not anymore of a state, but the region. And one step more, in Wallonia, the region gives this authority to issue some certificate to a, a private organization. So meaning that I have also to translate for the Bulgarian Food Agency all the rules of Wallon region to explain that the certificate regarding bio product is issued by a private organization. At the level of the European Union, we have the labeling of the foodstuff. And so here, you have the content of the labeling. So for foodstuff, you have the name of the, uh, of the food, you have the list of ingredients, and of course, there are many things to have a look. You have the net quantity of a product. You have the minimum durability of a product. And here, I fight with the agency in Bulgaria, because in Belgium, Luxembourg, France, we are used to put there for chocolate, for example, to be stored in a dry and cool place. Bulgaria, they don't want dry, okay. Cool place, they don't know what is cool. So they want that for every product, you save a range of temperature that your product has to be kept. And this storage place, twice a day, you have to take the temperature to to write on a register and that the agency can control that it was in good storage condition. So you need the country of origin or the place of provenance, if there are some alcohol. And here come what they say to me. Lot marking, indication which allow Identification of the lot to which the foodstuff belongs shall be a fix on prepackaged stuff precededly to the letter L. So I come back in my presentation. The company, sorry. The company for chocolate, you see, there is a lot number here. There was not L before. And the other company, they put number lot, and this is clear, that's not exactly like European Union, but it can be acceptable. But normally you have to put a L here, and then the number. So these are European rules, that apply to everybody in all the country. And you have here all the nutrition declaration and so on with the mandatory content. So you have a part of things that are mandatory at the level of European Union, and you have another part which is not mandatory. Take care, a country of European Union can impose you to fix this. So this is an example in a very simple product of how you have to take care to the things and where you can have information regarding this. So this site is really, if you deal with product, a site that you deal inside or outside European Union, you have in this site lots of information. No, that was for food products. But if I deal with computer, if I deal with electric devices, if I deal with lots of other things, for example, even chairs, some kinds of chairs and so on, I have something that is mandatory 
to sell product in the European Union for some product. That's a C marking on the product. So you know well this around you. There are lots of object or product with this CE. And you have a website from the European Union describing all this rules. And so seal marking, what is it? And we speak a lot about this in Belgium last spring with the mask and so on. So seal marking is mandatory for some kind of product. So I already give you an example with an electric device and computers and things like this. But it's also valid for some pharmaceutical product and so on. There you have some very strict rules but for example for the mask not and the mask that was exactly the same as lots of products with c labeling this c what does it mean the person the company who affixed the c labeling on the product certified that this product comply with european rules applicable to this kind of product and that's only a self-certification even european union rules does not fix who has to certify this by affixing the ce label so meaning that when you go around european union with products and so on you need to put ce but except for some chemical, some pharmaceutical product that are listed, you would not have any authorities, any laboratories who will check if your product is compliant with C marking labels. So, if you deal with medical supplies or you have some specific rules now here because of the corona otherwise you have on this website all the information necessary to see if your product has to be ce labeled and you have here how to handle all this and if you go through independent assessment, then of course you will suffer some cost about this, even if it's not mandatory for your product. So, for example, here, if you can put by yourself, if your product is free, let's say, then you can download the CE marking here and affix to your product. So, CE marking is something that is in European Union mandatory for lots of products, but take care, most of the product does not necessarily comply to the C marking rules. And if there is any problem, the authorities would go to the seller of a product towards the final consumer. So take care when you are selling products that you have not manufacturers and so on, and you have received it with a CE marking, but you didn't check that they comply with the rules. So you can be liable. And if you can have, let's say, uh, action towards your supplier, that's great. But if your supplier, you cannot have action towards him, for example, for people that buy first the goods in China, they import it. It go through the custom, and then you sell it inside the European Union. The Chinese has a fixed C double You are not dealing with foreign, but it was going from foreign. So let's say you can have some responsibility regarding this. Now regarding the services. For services, we have two kinds of services. We have the intellectual services. So the intellectual services 
are the one performed by consultant, for example, study of feasibility or realization of a project, advisor, fiscal, legal matters, for example, expert supervision, for example, of something uh, foreign and so on. You are a specialist in how to uh, install this kind of thing. You don't do it by yourself, but you advise the people. If you are with integral services, then the supplier can, without any specific formality, invoice from Belgium, from its company in Belgium, with exemption of Belgian VAT, in, um, Belgian VAT, at the condition, of course, that you check that your client is a professional client, meaning that he has a VAT number valid. And this take care. Uh, in a previous presentation last year, I put that there are some specific rules in Greece and in Bulgaria regarding some withholding tax, meaning that if you sell for 100 to a client for this kind of services, the rules in his country, Bulgaria, no, impose him to do a withholding tax 10%. It was the case for Greece last year, but it changed with the lease. So we have only Bulgarian that impose withholding tax on foreign companies that perform non intellectual services in Bulgaria. So intellectual services in Bulgaria, meaning if you are advisor, consultant, and so on. So that's very easy from your Belgian company you can have some intellectual services abroad without taking care of too many things. Of course, you have to see if the foreign countries allow you to do this kind of operation in this country. For example, in Belgium, there are some activities that you can only perform if you have some authorization and so on. That's the same for you. The non intellectual services imply that the supplier is present in the country of a client with its employee, workers, or equipment, and or, let's say, equipment, to perform a contract. Therefore, the supplier must be registered in the country of a client and invoice from a VAT number granted to him upon request by the fiscal authorities of a client's country. So I give you an example. You have to do the installation of an equipment in France. It will take, let's say, 10 days, and you send your teams from Belgium to France. You have sold the equipment installed in France. All your contract is subject to French VAT because of the installation, meaning that before performing the contract, so that's before you get the order, or at the latest when you install the equipment for rain, you have gone to the French VAT administration and request at the name of your company in Belgium a French VAT number. So meaning that a Belgian company can have VAT number in all the other country of the European Union. So meaning that then a French company gives you an order for installation of an equipment. What is it special? Of course, they give the order to a Belgian company, but the Belgian company must be registered with, with French VAT. So meaning that all the invoices on this contract must invoice also French VAT to the client, meaning that you install in the country of a client, you have your material in Belgium. First, you have to transfer the material from your Belgian VAT number to your French VAT number. You have to pay the VAT the French VAT on your acquisition of material on your French VAT number. And then after 
you can invoice your clients with French VAT. And take care, we are used in Belgium to have, let's say, a kind of compensation. One, you buy goods in European Union or services, what is in Belgium. You say to the Belgian state, I buy some goods or some services, intellectual services in Germany. I receive an invoice from the German company without German VAT. So Belgian VAT apply or on the invoice of this German supplier. So me client, professional client, I want to pay you 21 person Belgian VAT. But at the time you say this in Belgium, as it is in the framework of your activity, you can recover this VAT. So meaning that simply in your VAT declaration, you say that you have to pay and immediately you recover. Take care when you are in other country of European Union. And I show you here this example with France. I'm a Belgian company. I sell to a French client with installation. So first, to install the material, I have to transfer the material from the Belgian VAT number of my Belgian company to the French VAT number of my Belgian company. So meaning that at that time you have to pay the French VAT because you are like a company in France buying goods from another country of the European Union. In France, you have to pay it. And in France, one month later, the state gives you back this money. In Belgium, we do. I have to pay and I work over immediately. In France, you have one month difference. So in each of the country of the European Union, you want to do operation of services, meaning non-intellectual services. You have to take care that if you are obliged to register to the VAT of a country, you could have to pay in a way that is not common in Belgium. So in Belgium, I don't have to pay the VAT because I can recover immediately. But in France, I have to pay it and I will recover one month later. And of course, when you invoice the clients, that's a client from France who order you in the same contract, an equipment with installation. All the contract is subject to French VAT. So from the French VAT number of your Belgian company, you will invoice your French client with French VAT. So the intellectual services, as intellectual services are rendered from the seller from Belgium. There is no special rules applicable in business to business services. So meaning that you invoice a company foreign in European Union who has a VAT number. Belgian company can invoice from Belgium in exemption of Belgian VAT. VAT will be paid and recovered as per the rules of a state of a client by the client on, in its European Union country. It is recommended before accepting such contract and or order from client to check if Belgian company has necessary requirement to perform such services in the country of a client. So you know, I already speak about that in Belgium, there are lots of uh, activities that are subject to authorization. For example, you cannot open a restaurant in Belgium if you don't have uh, a certain diploma degree and so on. So it can be the same for, for some, uh, some, some uh, job for it. Non-intellectual services. So I resume what I explained with a French case. So it is not required to create a branch or a subsidiary in European Union foreign countries. So you are a company in Belgium and you take an order 
with installation, uh, repair, and so on, maintenance, and so on, foreign. There is no obligation to create a separate legal company, so meaning a subsidiary in French filial or a branch in French succursal. That's something that you have foreign and who is directly settled in a foreign country. According to European Union rules, you are not obliged to do this for most of a business. So any company, as I already told, in the European Union can have VAT number in the over 26 European Union countries. So a Belgian company can have a VAT number in another EU country, as European Union companies are free to perform services in the whole of the European Union but need to be client, uh, compliant with the rules of a client country. So, meaning that in a previous seminar, we described that there are, uh, let's say, a free movement of person, of goods, of services, uh, of uh, financial and so on. So, according to the European rules, you can do some services abroad directly from a Belgian company. But of course, you need to comply with the rules in the country's client. So, for example, in Belgium, when there are some people building uh, uh, some houses or some warehouse or things like this, they need to be registered in a certain uh, register. That's the same foreign. So you have to take care about all this. All non-intellectual services performed outside Belgium are subject to be registered for VAT in the country of a client, as local VAT has to be invoiced to both professional business to business and to private business to consumer clients. So meaning that for Intellectual services, I told you, if it's business to business, there is no problem. Of course, you have problem for business to consumer because the consumer does not have a VAT registration. So a private consumer cannot pay directly the VAT to the state. But here, for non-intellectual services, as you need a VAT number in the country of a client, it applied to both professional and private clients. Take care when taking such VAT registration, because should the activity of the Belgian company foreign exceed, exceeding six months in a civil year in a specific foreign country, then the company can be subject to income tax, so tax on profit for the related business in the country of a client. The client in singular or plurals, if you have several clients in France, for example. So a company that do, that do during 200 days activities in France in a fiscal year, normally she has to pay income tax on the profits of the French activities in France. So now in summary, the fiscal, I know that I speak many times about the subject, but it's really important to, to understand. So when selling products from Belgium in business to business, to another European Union country client that can be done from Belgian VAT number and in exemption of Belgian VAT if you have a transport document, CMR, that's a reward transportation document that is mostly applied in Europe, signed by the carrier and indicating the place of delivery outside Belgium, but inside the European Union. Destination country VAT is paid and recovered by the client. So we are in business to business. Take care if you are selling product in e-commerce, so meaning in business to consumer to private clients, 
it's required to be registered for VAT purpose in the country or countries, if you are present in several countries, of a client according to European Union rules. Taking into account that some countries allow not to be registered for an annual turnover for around 30,000 euros. It depends from one country to the other. So the normal rules according to the European Union, you do e-commerce to consumer, private clients, you have to be uh, registered at the VAT in the country of a client. But some country of the European Union allow you, if you are in an annual turnover around 30,000 euro, not to bill the VAT of a country of a client. And of course, then you have to send your invoice or to make paid with the VAT of Belgium. But take care, check carefully this according to the country where you are present, because it changed from one country to the other. Selling product directly on clients' territory, so meaning you exhibit on a trade fair or you are present at an event and you sell directly the product on the fair and your client leave the fair with your product. Whatever your clients are professional or private, it's required to be registered for VAT purpose in the country of the client, meaning the country where the trade fair on the event was organized. And this is a very complicated rule because lots of companies, for example, chocolates, beers, wine, if you are French and you come in Belgium and so on, they go two, three days in another country of the European Union for an event, for a trade fair and so on. They sell some products, but most of the time they are not aware with these VAT rules. And in some countries that are very strict, they control. And countries very strict, I can tell you, for example, you have Luxembourg that is very, very strict on this regard. So if one day you go to a Christmas market, Easter market, something in Luxembourg, and you are a Belgian company with a Belgian VAT number, take care if you are not registered in Luxembourg with a VAT number, Luxembourg VAT number at the name of your Belgian company, you can have big problems with the authorities in Luxembourg because in Luxembourg, the customs is sent to inspect this kind of fair. It's also a, a little the case in Germany, sometimes there are some problems, but there is a strict country also in Eastern Europe regarding this, that's Hungary. Intellectual services rendered by the seller from Belgium are to be invoiced from Belgium in exemption of VAT, as we said. The VAT will be paid and recovered by the client in its European Union country. And all non-intellectual services performed outside Belgium are subject to be registered for VAT in the country of client, as local VAT has to be invoiced to both professional B2B and private B2C clients and Belgian company active in a foreign country exceeding six months in a civil year in a foreign country is subject to income tax for the related business in that country. We already speak about this in the previous, but I summarize everything regarding fiscal here. Social. Except in COVID period and also in terrorist period and so on, borders are open. People are crossing the borders without any problems and so on. And most of the company do not realize that when you send workers and all employee foreign, you require to comply with the Belgian rules, of course. European rules, but also destination country rules. So you have to know that if you send some workers, I don't speak about commercial people that visit the client, but I speak about workers that perform, let's say, uh, some uh, some site works for and so on. 
there is a very important European rule. So each time you send a worker foreign to work foreign, except for the commercial, as I said, you have to request from the social security the A1 certificate, meaning that your worker is covered by the Belgian social security system. Because if he go foreign and he does not have this certificate, it is mandatory that it is registered at the social security in the foreign country. And so you didn't do the A1 certificate through social security in Belgium. He's somewhere foreign, there is a control. He does not have the A1 certificate. He had to be registered then locally. You are not registered locally, then you do a fraud. So when you see in Belgium all of the East European workers that are working here and so on, lots of people are thinking that it's a common rule in European Union to have some people that come here to work and who are not respecting the rules. No, European Union say that you have to comply with the local rules. And that means that the state where people are working have to control this. But we are used in Belgium to be in a country where you don't have so much control. Take care, lots of country around us and let's say from my experience also in Eastern Europe and so on, control much more than us. So please, if you send people foreign, except commercial people that negotiate contract, be always sure that you do the appropriate formalities. One thing that's not necessary for the company, but you have to take care because, of course, if your employees or workers suffer of this, you will have a problem also. So if you send foreign a worker on an employee working more than six months in a civil year, what happened? That the salary of this worker could be and normally will be subject to person personal income tax in this country. So, for example, we are not speaking about people crossing the border every day. You send somebody in Marseille or you send somebody in Berlin and he stay there during seven months on a civil year. Normally, the personal income tax has to be paid in the country where he stayed more than six months. So meaning that if you have a worker in Belgium and you send him, that's a crazy example, but six times two months in a year in different countries, you don't have this problem. But if you send them more than six months in a country, he can be subject to personal income tax in this country. But the problem sometimes, the worker that you send, they are not registered in the country where they work. Why? Because they have still their family in Belgium and they pay their tax in Belgium. This is a very complicated problem to match the fiscal requirements and the, the private life of the people. So you have here a website of the European Union. I give you lots of uh, information regarding this uh, today. So, posting stuff abroad, uh, if you want to have it in French or in Dutch, you have it also. But here we speak English, so I put it in English. So, you have here all the European rules, including the coronavirus uh, restriction to cross border for people that companies send abroad. So, on this website, you have everything you need to match with the legal requirements of the European Union. So here, that's everything from European Union. So the A1 certificate that I just mentioned, if you click here, 
you are in Belgium. And so you have where you can have this A1 certificate to go for it. Mistake. And they are for short period and they are for long term positioning. So long term, it's defined as more than 12 months. So there it became clear that you have to arrange everything for them. And then if you send somebody foreign, you can choose here the different countries of European Union. And then you will have the national rules in each of the country of European Union. Um, I tell you frankly, so if you go in Hungary, Hungary, that's true. Bulgaria, it depends where you go. Other country, it depends also. But don't expect to speak English or something like this to solve your problem. You need somebody that is speaking the language of the administration for me. Language. We already speak a little about this, but language is a key issue to deal across the European Union. We are used to speak English when going foreign, Take care. First, United Kingdom is not anymore a member of the European Union. So that's quite funny that we are still all speaking English. That is not anymore, except for Ireland, an official language of the European Union. But if English seems to be an universal language, it is really not the case when dealing with products or services to private clients mostly. So for private clients, there are some rules that impose to address all information, all contract documents, all labeling and all user guides, even call center. You have on most of the product call center if you have any question and so on. In national or regional language, I put national because in most of the country of the European Union, you have a single language. Belgium is the example of complicated things. So you have, if you are an EU company and you deal in Belgium, in the whole Belgium, you have to offer in Dutch, you have to offer in French. Only if you deal with Wallonia, it can be only in French. Only if you deal in Flanders, it can be only with, uh, with Flemish Dutch. So for professional client, this is more complicated because rules change in the various EU country for both goods and services. So meaning that in some country you can use English, but in some country has to be in the language of the territory. And so for example, I was drawing your attention for non-intellectual services in Belgium, the regional rules are applicable, for example, for work site. That's not the same in Flanders as in Brussels and as in Wallonia. So do not forget that when dealing abroad, an applicable law has to apply to order. So meaning your contract is subject to a law, an applicable law. So I'm Belgian, I deal with a German, Perhaps it's the Belgian law, perhaps it's the German law, perhaps it's still an over. There is a law applicable to the contract, meaning that in case of litigation to be settled by a court, if you take the Belgian law, of course, you will do a court, a tribunal in Belgium somewhere, can be in Wallonia, can be in Brussels, can be in Flanders. Ah, yes, but to do an action in a court in Belgium, the document must be translated in the language of the court. 
So meaning that if your contract is in English and all your documentation is in English, will have to be translated. So take care when you are dealing with foreign countries. It's not always acceptable to have a contract in a foreign language. So for example, my case in Bulgaria, I have bilingual uh, contracts in English and Bulgarian. And I succeed that the version in English can be accepted, but it's not always the case. So only few European Union countries enable to do, go to the court in English language. So meaning that Sweden, for example, is a good example. And that's why not inside the European Union, but in relation with uh, Russia, for example, the Swedish law and the Swedish court are often mentioned in the contract because it's possible to do everything in English. We are nearly at the end of this seminar. I want just to show you what you must be able to do it. And so I just show you the sticker to be affixed on this chocolate. So let's say if you are not able to do it by yourself, if you are not able to find people that are able to do it and so on, you have problems. Just if you want to laugh a little, a problem that we face with a food agency in Bulgaria, you know that in Belgium the postcode is always before the name of a city. In Bulgaria, that's opposite. So the marking was 88007. And they say, no, that's not your client. I say, yes, in every country, that's like this. Ah, yes, but here you are in Bulgaria. And in Bulgaria, that's first the city and then the postcode. So very small things and so on that can cause you problem. If really you are not friendly with people, if you cannot get local connection and so on. So really you have to take care of this. And for example, here, there was some composition of the products. And the product is 70 grams, and this data are by 100 grams, and we didn't see it, we didn't translate it. So they notice by themselves because they know their job. Finally, rules imposed by European Union, Belgium, destination country, and we had a look about lots of things but there are still many other things. So for example, if you, you deal with public body, meaning the state, the region, uh, public things, you have public tenders. And so that's special rules at the level of European Union, but that has been transferred in each of European Union uh, rules, members rules, so meaning that you have to follow this and you cannot sell how you want and so on without following strictly this state you know you know that it's public tenders but there are some private company acting in public services like communication like energy electric city gas transport, when this company are active in that sector, they must comply with a public tendering procedure. So meaning that it's very important. Sometimes you don't understand why a private client asks you lots of things or want to do a tender and so on. It's because according to European Union law, is obliged to follow the public standards because that's a private company but active in public services. So for example, uh, trains and so on, that's the case. Finally, and in this COVID period, let's say lots of things can be said about this, there are some agreements of products such for example, pharmaceutical product, but it's not the only one. 
So if you are dealing with the health, with medicine and so on, where do you find aspirin in Belgium? Answer is very short. You go to a pharmacy. Where do you find aspirin in the Netherlands? Answer is very simple. You go to the supermarket or some stores like this, and some of mass pharmaceutical products are free of sales. Meaning that if you sell aspirin in the Netherlands, you will deal with uh, with organization of supermarket and so on. If you did this in Belgium, you will deal with people who, uh, who are dealing with pharmacy and so on. And if you are dealing with new products, so for example, COVID and so on, what is the problem? As all the Belgium have a social security system, your product needs to be agreed in a country where if you go in some country abroad, but mostly out of European Union, but even in Bulgaria, I saw some things. Some product, let's say, as the state does not reimburse the treatments, they are easier to find in another country. Why? Because the state is not implicated in this business. So let's say, if you have the money to pay this, you have it. But in countries like Belgium, like France, like Germany, it's not the case. So you have to take care of all this. And finally, I put four points. Because of course, according your product, according your services, you need to develop by yourself the skills adapted to the activity of your company. And even if I have a good view of many things, regularly, when I discuss with some company, I'm very surprised of constraint they meet to go in a certain market and so on. And so this cannot be expected if you are not in the sector. So I, I like very much to always take a case. We are human, we are living in Belgium, in France, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Luxembourg. And there is nobody who is 50 centimeters tall and in another country, the same person is two meters high. But according to the rules of buildings in the different countries, the highness of the stairs and the width of the stairs are different from Belgium to France to Luxembourg to Germany. That's national rules. So if you are not in that sector, never you can imagine that there are some differences and perhaps you will deliver some goods or you will install some goods or you will do things never thinking that it can be a problem. And in fact, it is. So I thank you for your attention in this seminar, webinar. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, hello, um, this is Natalie. Yeah. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, we have indeed a few questions. Is that all right if I ask them right now? Yes. Okay. Uh, first one, it's in relation to VAT. Um, yes. will, a, will a Russian citizen purchasing jewelry in Brussels have to pay the VAT in Brussels? First question. So first, we are not inside the European Union, we are outside. So that's not the topic of the day, but of course I no. will answer. So let's say that's a private person, okay? That's a private who purchases in Brussels. So this is different according to the different country of the European Union. So in Belgium, what is the common rules? So the seller has to be member of an, organ, of an organization with funding tax. You see this in some shops in Brussels. 
And what does it mean? That means that he will sell with VAT. And he will fill a special documents when the Russian citizens will exit European Union by the airport of Brussels, he will have to make a stamp on the paper of a reformed organization, and then he will receive on a bank account back this money. That's the common rule. If you go in Germany, that's why I say that it's not the topic of the day, but I explain. If you go in Germany, that's completely different. It's not needed to have a refund company, meaning that the company do a special paper, German paper, I know it in the area of Frankfurt. They give it to you, and after you have to do your check-in and you are in the international zone of the airport, you go to an office of the German fiscal administration and they give you back in cash this money. But in Brussels, that's through reform organization. Okay. Um, can I go to the next question? Yes. Uh, this one is not outside of the scope, so... Uh, it... Oh, there is no problem. Eh? <laughs> I just mentioned it because, let's yes, say, otherwise course. people don't understand why there is this, but I can answer. That's not a problem. Okay, Th this one is about, um, so, food producers. You spoke about ASCA, uh, the ASCA registration for food producers. Uh, what about HACCP? Is it mandatory inside the EU? No. HACCP, it, let's say that's known inside the European Union. Some sectors require this, but it's not mandatory. Okay. So, meaning okay. that if you are HACCP in the European Union, that's really a plus for some buyers. Uh, of course, HACCP can apply some, for some things linked with pharmaceutical and so on. Eh? But if you are with pure food product, that's not mandatory. Because okay. the rules are very okay. strict. I give you an example. I give lesson in the training center, IFA PME in Wallonia, and they have a restaurant, HACCP. Meaning that in uh, in the cooking place, there are very strict rules, and at the end of the circuit of the cooking, the garbage you have to put in a fridge, waiting the truck to come. They cannot stand like this in an open area and so on. So that's the rule of HACCP. Take care. So uh, I give you what has to be noticed. It's not mandatory in the European Union, but in some countries, even for the chocolate in Japan, that's mandatory. So normally you cannot sell chocolates in Japan if you are not a JCCP and other food stuff. So in Asia, that's well known. Why? Because they have some safety concern and they don't have public bodies like AFSCA. So they develop this JCCP system. Okay. okay, thank you for this one. I have a, a couple more questions. Um, can I go on to the next one? Um, this is more in relation to, sorry, again, out of the EU. Uh, now that the UK has left the EU, do you have a view on how to trade B2C? Do the Belgian expert has, has to have a UK VAT registration? Correct. Um, Correct. Even, sorry? Correct. So meaning that you are a Belgian company with a Belgian VAT number and you want to send directly to private clients in UK. So first, you, you need to establish a system with a UK VAT number, meaning that you will send your product to a virtual really virtual 
UK entity that's like in e-commerce. So you transfer the goods from your Belgian company to your UK VAT number. Take care, because of course with Brexit, if you are a new company and you have a numéro d'entreprise, company number, you cannot anymore export to UK because you need to transform your VAT number in a NEORI number. So meaning that towards the Belgian authorities to send goods in, in England, even for private, you need to do this. So when you send the goods, you will send directly to your client, but through your UK VAT numbers, meaning that you need a neori also but an english neori and when the goods arrive on the territory of england you have to pay the english vat to yes. the share and excise in uh, england and then after you have to sell to your private clients with english vat uk vat I give you there, of course, if you have big quantities of product and so on, if you want to sell for 50 euro, you have a problem. So what most of the people will do for 50 euro, they will sell the product, they will send it, but at the moment there will be a problem because one DHL or the post want to deliver to the client, they say, ah, it's coming from uh, outside United Kingdom. So there are some custom duties and there are some uh, VAT to be paid. Custom duties that zero if a product is from the European Union, but you will have some fees. I give you an example. I receive in Luxembourg something from Japan worth less than 40 euro. And it come by post, and I had to pay to the post 22 euro. It was a part six euro VAT, 15 euro for custom procedure for a post package. And the same will apply with UK. Now that they are out of the European Union. Okay. So um, the best if somebody has quite some volume with uh, some clients to reduce the cost because if the client has to pay 50 percent of the value for this kind of thing he will not come back again most of the time so what is important if you develop really an activity in uk that's to find somebody in uk who will be your distributors meaning that you will send the goods business to business to this company, and this company will resell to the various private clients. This is the right way to do it. Okay. But once again, if you have six products at 50 euro, you will not do this for this. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. Can I have just one more question? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, is an art piece considered as a product in the same way regarding to the rules? For example, if um, I, not, a person sells in different art, fair, art fairs in the EU, does it mean that uh, the, the person needs a VAT number in every country? Yes. If you sell directly on the fair, yes. So if you are in France, you have to wear it just but in France and to sell in France with French VAT. If you go to Amsterdam or to Maastricht for the TEFAF, Dutch VAT number, you have no other choice. It would be different if you exhibit and then the client come to your shop in Brussels. So this has to be think about. Okay, I'm um, just checking. I um, think we got all the questions. Just a moment. Uh, I think I see just one more here. 
If you have a e-shop in Belgium selling all over the world, what do you do for VAT? I speak only about European Union. In okay, European sorry. Union, no, 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 no. That's my answer. For European Union, according to European Union rules, it's mandatory to have a VAT in each of the EU members' country. If you ask me for the rest of the world, that's a European Union rules. So if an American sell directly to private customer in Belgium, not money for American must have a VAT number in Belgium. Uh, I give lesson on Zoom. Zoom is American, but they invoice me because I'm located in Luxembourg with Luxembourg and VAT. Okay? So for reporting, that's the same. If now you are from Belgium to the rest of the world, if you send to private customer in e-commerce, for sure you have to apply for Belgian VAT because that's not professional clients. And so you cannot exempt them of VAT and uh, of VAT. But when the goods arrive at destination, in some country, the client will receive it without paying anything. And in other country, you will have to pay or not. So when you speak this, I know the rules inside European Union. If you ask me the rest of the world, then you have to see for each country of interest. Okay. And um, for example, just one thing, if it's concerning uh, United States, and it's valid also for, for the people with out there. If you deliver to US, the US has not a system of VAT, that's a system of sales tax. So that's always possible to deliver through people like FedEx, DHL in US with an interterm DDP, meaning that at, in your price, you have all the American taxes. And this is possible. But for example, in Russia, you want to sell goods to a private person in Russia, this would be a big problem. Because normally has to be a Russian from the Russian authorities to custom clear the goods and the person cannot custom clear the goods if it's not uh, a company. Okay. Um... I think we've got, we run over all the questions, so no more questions for today. Okay, so it was Thank a pleasure to much. be with you this afternoon. Thank you for attending to everybody.